Spectre and Meltdown, two words that early this year left many Intel customers very concerned and left a large group of AMD fans feeling pretty dang smug, even though AMD didn't get off entirely scot-free. Those two flaws were a pretty big deal and if exploited correctly, could give attackers prime access to any system running an affected chip. But after the flaws came to light and even before then, companies and experts around the world started working on mitigations and release patches that minimize the risks that these vulnerabilities pose. But just like that one, one annoying friend who won't stop sending messages while you're just trying to enjoy a match of PUBG in peace? Tank, seems we haven't heard the last of Spectre and Meltdown. So Google and Microsoft recently announced that they've sniffed out a fourth variant of the Spectre and Meltdown flaws, and it affects chips from Intel, AMD, and ARM, along with a few of IBM's processors. This fourth variant is known as speculative store bypass vulnerability, which Intel explains, quote, uses speculative execution, a feature common to most modern process architectures, to potentially expose certain kinds of data through a side channel, end quote. Now, unless your computer speak is level 95 or higher, the full detailed explanation of the vulnerability might be a little hard to follow, so we won't be getting too deep into it. Instead, we'll try to simplify it as best as we can. So modern processors are built for speed. They use various methods to ensure they're doing whatever they're doing as fast as possible. One of these methods is speculative execution. This method, as far as we can tell, involves the CPU looking ahead and performing actions it expects will need to be taken next before the current instructions are complete. This means the processor doesn't have to wait on slower operations to finish up before it starts working on the next one. Unfortunately, this process isn't perfect. The processor might speculatively execute something that turns out to be incorrect. And when that happens, the whole process has to be restarted. But because of the way modern CPUs employ this method, the discarded instruction leaves data behind in unsecure areas of the chip. If exploited correctly, the new vulnerability could give attackers access to said data that often includes stuff like passwords and the like. So Red Hat has a similarly cut down but far more accurate description of the process over on their channel. So be sure to check that out if you're still a little lost because I know I can be a little confused sometimes. It's okay, moving on. So according to Intel, researchers showed the exploit in action, quote, in a language-based runtime environment, end quote. And the most common use of runtimes, like JavaScript, is in browsers. So thankfully, because most good browsers already develop mitigations for runtimes after Meltdown Inspector first reared their ugly heads, it should be substantially more difficult to exploit side channels in a web browser, even in the case of the SSB vulnerability. Even so, Intel and other companies are already working on more robust mitigations to prevent SSB from being exploited, including, quote, a combination of microcode and software updates. Intel claims to have already given OEM manufacturers and vendors a beta version of the microcode mentioned, and that they expect it to, quote, be released into production, production BIOS and software updates over the coming weeks, end quote. Okay, great, so no worries then, right? Not exactly. See, because the mitigation targets speculative execution, you know, the thing that helps processors run faster, we can expect to see a performance loss of approximately two to eight percent in certain applications, which sucks a lot. Luckily, Intel states that this mitigation will be set to off by default, which lets users decide whether to use it or not. Most of us probably don't need the same level of security as data centers and the like, so giving average consumers the option of not slowing their systems down is a smart move. The microcode update also includes a fix for the rogue system register read vulnerability, but it's not expected to have any meaningful performance impact on client or server benchmarks. It should be noted that none of the companies involved in this whole affair have received reports of the new vulnerability ever having actually been exploited out in the wild yet, but obviously it's better to patch potential issues before they actually become issues. And while all of these flaws and vulnerabilities, including the original Meltdown Inspector lineup, seem more than a little scary, and not without reason, most, if not all of them, have been and continue to be patched up at almost every level. I mean, companies and experts are patching them up before potential attackers even catch wind of them. Not only that, but companies like Intel are already taking a good hard look at their upcoming chips on a hardware level to reduce security risks going forward. Still, it's unfortunate that we have to deal with yet another security issue and yet another double-edged fix. But hey, 
At least with this one, we're given the option to forego some extra security in order to keep our processors running at the speed that they should be because that's all we care about. You got an 8700K, you don't want it down at 92% performance. You don't want your 2700X running at 98% performance. You bought it for 100% efficiency. And then it just throws everybody's review out the window because, you know, CPUs are worse now. Anyways, what do you think of the new Spectre vulnerability? Is this something that concerns you? Is this something that you will potentially uh, apply the fix for? Let's chat about that either down in the comments or in the community discord. Link for that will be in the video description. I really want to have a convo with you about that. Be sure to smash the like button if you enjoyed this video, you thought it was helpful, if this gave you some information you didn't previously have. Be sure to get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. I am Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.